AI agents are real and they are going to enter the workforce really soon. However, building AI agents for your enterprise is not an easy task. You need proper enterprise context and data. This is the exact problem which Microsoft is solving its co-pilot suit of products. Hi, I'm Siddharth Jindal, a tech journalist at AI Media House and today we are in Delhi to cover Microsoft Workforce Trend Index event. Puneet Chindo, President of India and South Asia, shared a very interesting insight with us. 93% of Indian leaders are confident that AI agents are going to enter the workforce within the next 12 to 18 months. Very soon, AI agents will be your digital teammates helping you in your daily tasks at your office, making you more productive. Stay with us throughout the entire video as we have an exclusive interview with Puneet Chindok for you guys. conversation today is about AI. We're here today because we are at a remarkable moment in history. AI for the first time can reason, AI can now think, AI can solve problems, AI can be creative, as well as human beings and sometimes even better. We're entering a new reality and we'll show you data to bring this to life and, and prove this to you, but we're truly entering a new reality where machines can do cognitive work, where machines can think, where we can get machines to manufacture intelligence, where companies and people and journalists and technologists like me and all of us can access intelligence on tap. I think that's a big shift. Hi Puneet, uh, good to have you. Good to have you. Pleasure so, to be here, man. Thank yeah. you for doing it. Yeah. So, like a uh, uh, really interesting session uh, keynote you had in the morning where you mentioned about you are not a digital Sisyphus anymore. So, I wanted to like continue on that. I wanted to know like uh, besides reading email, is there anything else you would like uh, Copilot to do it for you? And what are the next new features we can expect from Copilot? By the way, Copilot is not just reading emails for me. It's doing incredible. One, it's drafting emails, responses. It's synthesizing all documents that I look at. All, so before I get into any business review, I usually will have a big report with 100 data points. Yeah. It summarizes them, synthesizes them, gives me the right questions to poke on. So it's becoming a companion, it's becoming a teammate, it's becoming a colleague for me. Before any meeting I go to, it prepares me fully for that. So I think it's just an incredibly powerful tool. Mm -hmm. In terms of what's coming, I, I'm really excited about this concept of digital colleagues and how Copilot is moving from an assistant to an agent, to now a digital colleague, where mm -hmm. it's no longer a tool, it's becoming a teammate. Somebody that works with me throughout, it becomes a UI for all the agents that I'm building, mm -hmm. that I'm working with, manages all the agents and gives me the right information, mm -hmm. gets the right stuff done for me, makes me a lot more efficient, effective, gives me a lot of time back, yeah. which I can use it for my personal life, and of course, back, back at work. Yeah, so like uh, right now, uh, Copilot is being integrating existing apps uh, like Microsoft 365, but uh, are you looking at a completely new interface as well for Copilot besides chat and existing apps? By the way, this morning when you saw, right, Copilot can now see you, so it's got perception. Um, uh, it obviously has cognitive abilities and it has now agency with agents, right? So uh, it is now integrated into pretty much all our office applications, be it mm -hmm. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, of course, email, chat, Teams, mm -hmm. uh, SharePoint. Uh, it has its own interface. So if you use mm -hmm. the consumer version of Copilot, uh, mm -hmm. it has a completely different interface and it works directly on your phone the way you want it. Mm -hmm. And now with vision and perception coming in, if Copilot can see everything that you can see, mm -hmm. the amount of intelligence that you can get out of it, it will be at a completely different level. It will genuinely be, like rather than you and I sitting together, it will be Copilot sitting on the third chair, looking at the camera, looking at the environment, and giving us context and intelligence, I think that's something that I'm excited about. Yeah, and also you mentioned about like uh, as compared to global uh, global uh, countries, other countries, India is like moving fast and they're adopting AI agents like uh, quickly than any other country. Like, what can be the reason for that? Like, if you have any particular insight, why India is ahead of other countries? First, I'm super glad India is ahead. India <laughs> needs to be even more ahead, and I don't. We are not just following this AI revolution; we're setting the pace for it across all parameters. If you look at the WTI report, right? from companies and leaders looking at re-operating their business or rewiring their core business mm -hmm. with AI, 
to people using agents. Mm -hmm. India is always leading the pack. More than 90% of leaders in India believe they'll have agents mm -hmm. in the workforce in the next 12 to 18 months, skilling yeah. India is once again ahead of the pack. So I think that is something that is super exciting. Why it's happening, and I think a few things. One, India has got generally the largest workforce in the, yeah. in the world, the, also the youngest workforce, the second largest AI talent pool in the world, 17 million developers in GitHub, the fastest growing developer community, we are scaling as Microsoft. We mm -hmm. want to scale 10 million people. We scale 2.4 million already on AI, 65% mm -hmm. women, 74% from small towns. Mm -hmm. So I think just this demographic, demographic dividend, mm -hmm. the young workforce, which now, at least as Microsoft, we're trying to make it an AI first workforce mm -hmm. is a real advantage. Second is this digital infrastructure, digital roadways, as I call mm -hmm. it, which is of course, Aadhaar and UPI and mm -hmm. ONDC and all the work that's happening around around digital. And then third is this ecosystem that's come together in India beautifully mm -hmm. with 100,000 startups, 100 new startups every day, every day multinationals building, yeah. global capability centers yeah. for the world. So all three things together, the youngest and the largest, second largest AI population, digital infrastructure and the ecosystem of startups and multinationals and mm -hmm. global capability centers coming together. I think that is really putting India ahead and we'll continue to march on. Yeah, continuing that, like uh, there's a buzz around like how Indian IT is uh, falling behind in like uh, uh, creating AI in infrastructure for on their own. Like they have a lot of uh, cash, but they're not acquiring companies like other players globally. So like how do you, the future, do, do you see the future of Indian IT in the era of AI? Uh, like and how can Microsoft assist them? Like you mentioned about examples of companies and doing wipe coding with GitHub Copilot. So like to more about that, like how do you the see the future of Indian IT? Like, I think Indian IT services is very well positioned, right? Because going back to the the talent dividend and the demographic dividend, right? I mean, there are five million people deployed across IT services in India. It's a young workforce. Mm -hmm. It's a workforce that's learning AI. We are partnering with Cognizant and HCL and Infosys and LTI. Mind to you mentioned yeah. earlier today. So I think one, we've got the the workforce that is becoming AI mm -hmm. ready. I think mm -hmm. that's the first thing. Second, Indian IT services over the last thirty years is. Mm -hmm has built many of these propositions around application mm -hmm. development, business process outsourcing, mm -hmm. uh, testing, infrastructure, right? So I think their ability to use that expertise, that data, that knowledge mm -hmm. to build the next service offerings. And then third is partnerships, mm -hmm. right? The Microsoft partnership with some of the IT services yeah. players that I spoke about, which is really exciting, but really getting partnerships together because mm -hmm. none of us have yeah, yeah. all the answers, yeah, yeah. but Microsoft brings the best AI stack, the best AI scaffolding, mm -hmm. IT services brings a lot of domain and mm -hmm. access to customers and the young workforce and the scale that they operated. I think you bring these three things together, yeah. I think the future is bright. Of course, there is a lot of change required, a lot of mm. agility required. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that uh, that the IT services companies in India will will make this happen. So like while tools like GitHub Copilot are automating coding services, there's a lot of fear among uh, the students like uh, about uh, getting laid off or not getting enough jobs for young students. So like uh, in the, like normally in the IT industry, we have seen in the uh, few past few weeks there have been layoffs. So how, like how do you see that? Listen, I think the way to frame the way I frame AI is one: this is not restructuring workforce; it's rewiring the workforce. Right? And that's a big mm. big shift. Second, I think AI will augment human capabilities, it'll augment you and I, it mm -hmm. won't replace you and I. Um, and I think a couple of things that we should think about in a positive light. First, AI is creating many new roles and jobs that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. 12 months ago, nobody knew about an agent orchestrator, mm -hmm. or an agent boss, or an AI workflow designer, mm -hmm. or a system optimizer. These are all new roles, creating job opportunities, mm -hmm. waiting for skilled and talent to come in, right? Second, I think the color of our jobs will change. Mm -hmm. right? If over time, if AI takes away the grunt work, the transactional mm -hmm. work, our ability to focus on value adding work, which basically means we need to skill really fast. All mm -hmm. of us need to be AI fluent. Mm -hmm. We need to know how to work with these tools and not just work with these tools, build agents, get digital colleagues to work for you, mm -hmm. get the right domain knowledge and make sure these tools work with you. Mm -hmm. So I think bring those things together. And then finally, companies will become more agile, right? Going back mm -hmm. to IT services, yeah. where do you deploy resources? How do you shift resources? How do you skill constantly? Mm -hmm move them from one function to the other. Mm -hmm. I think that's the exciting part. Yeah, like uh, coming back to Microsoft, uh, like uh, uh, this year, I think uh, 15,000 people were uh, laid off. So like, uh, like I wanted to ask you, like, is it uh, due to like uh, AI efficiency or like uh, the allocation of resources? Listen, as an organization, we're always looking at resources. We are adjusting mm -hmm. our business operations. We're streamlining, reducing redundancy so that we can invest in the areas. Mm -hmm. Some of the new, products that I spoke about that we're building more mm -hmm. products built in the last one year than the last five years combined mm -hmm. is not just because of coding being automated, but also mm -hmm. our ability to invest in these areas, right? So as an organization, mm -hmm. looking at what customers want, what the countries we operate in want, mm -hmm. working backwards from that and constantly being agile and reinvesting 
is what we're doing and we'll continue to do that. Yeah. And uh, like, uh, how do you see Indian AI ecosystem? Like, do you see them as merely uh, like uh, on based on application layer where they are adopting ex existing technologies, or do you see like India also building a foundational framework for AI? So like, it's been quite some time since India Mission was launched, I, and uh, you in partnership with Yota also uh, are contributing to the same. So like, uh, what, how do you see that evolving? Like, uh, by when we can expect uh, some foundation work from India, or do you see us like? Like male, male adopters of AI from other companies. Listen, I, th I think a lot of innovations happening in India, both in the private startup, private mm -hmm. ecosystem, private sector ecosystem, and the startup ecosystem, and also the government. With the government, the AI mission is really exciting, right? Mm -hmm. The ability to get GPUs and get them to students and researchers, the mm -hmm. ability to build large language models, the ability to get the startup ecosystem fired up on AI, mm -hmm. I think is just uh, really exciting, and we're working closely with the government on that. Mm -hmm. I think back to innovation, I'll give you an example of Core.ai. It's yeah. a fascinating digital native startup out of India. Mm -hmm. They're building uh, AI agents for services, for customer service, for operations, and they're partnering with us, mm -hmm. building on Azure OpenAI, integrating with our products. Real innovation happening. Blinkit, we, were, we yeah. all see quick commerce in this yeah. part of the world, right? They're using Azure OpenAI and really mm -hmm. thinking about recipes and how to get the right SKUs mm -hmm. out there. There's a t Mintra is looking at yeah. shopping assistant, we spoke about that, but there's a lot of innovation happening around AI and really using AI across mm -hmm. both B2C and B2B. Mm -hmm. And that's something, Darwin Box, another really exciting ISV mm -hmm. on HR systems using AI agents mm -hmm. to drive HR efficiency out of India and building for the world and building for yeah. India. So I think both in private sector and public sector, a lot of innovation happening, a lot more to come. Yeah, so like uh, Microsoft is a close partner of OpenAI and uh, they released, released GPT-5 yeah. recently and uh, also introduced a new plan for India, Ch Chat GPT Go. So like how do you see that development and how important is the pricing point in India and like is Microsoft going to do something similar for its enterprise? So OpenAI is a deep partnership. They're obviously a big partner, they're a big customer. Yeah. Uh, the largest consumer AI asset on the world, Chat GPT, is built on yeah. Azure, Azure OpenAI and works on our Azure platform. Um, so I think that's something we're excited about, it's a deep partnership. Uh, but the way we're thinking about our product portfolio is if I look at Copilots and mm -hmm. Copilot Studio and GitHub Copilot and Azure AI Foundry, we have 1,900 models yeah. today on Azure AI Foundry, right? So we want to give enterprises the choice of the right models, right mm -hmm. fit for purpose, horses for courses, in a secure, enterprise-grade, mm -hmm. responsible, trusted way. Yeah. That's what differentiates Microsoft, right? So we're building the most differentiated AI stack yeah. in a responsible way with an enterprise-grade security mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, the deep relationships that we have, right? Mm -hmm. Really bringing all of that together is something that truly differentiates Microsoft and we'll continue to build on that. Like, how important is the pricing in India? Like, uh, what do you think of the 399 subscription? I think the, that's a consumer subscription yeah. that, that OpenAI has launched and, and, and I read about that as well. Uh, and by the way, we have Copilot consumer yeah. option as well, which is mm -hmm. free to use for a certain amount. and. And I think that's a really exciting offer. Uh, for enterprises, I think yeah. the enterprises want something which is not, which is contextual to the enterprise, which okay. has the enterprise context and knowledge. For example, mm -hmm. I need a co-pilot which has access to my Microsoft 365 graph, my mm -hmm. email, my chats, my SharePoint, my calendar, my meetings, my documents, because then the advice and input and intelligence mm -hmm. I get is so much more contextual. Yeah. Right? So I think that's what enterprises in India are focused on, which is, this morning there was a conversation yeah. on AGI. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a real conversation on EGI, which is enterprise-grade yeah, enterprise intelligence, yeah. right? Which is, can we really get enterprises to bring mm -hmm. all the intelligence within the organization mm -hmm. on tap for every employee in the organization? And that's what Mike's out is doing. Yeah. So like focusing on uh, enterprise general intelligence, so like uh, for the first time, I think during the recent earnings call, Satya also revealed uh, Azure's earnings, uh, annual revenue of 75 billion. Yes. So like, like I wanted to ask you, like, uh, uh, like as Azure is a very important uh, cloud player, so like uh, how is it performing in India uh, and like what's the contribution from India for, to Azure? So globally, I think if you've heard the earnings, we spoke about 33% growth in Azure, which is just fascinating yeah. and exciting. Uh, we don't disclose local India okay. country numbers. But what I can tell you is, uh, overall, India is a super exciting market. We're investing and committing in India like never mm -hmm. before, and we'll continue to do it. Yeah. It's a fast-growing market. Uh, if I just look at co-pilots, by the way, going back to AI, 10x growth in the last six months, mm -hmm. and we're seeing continued momentum. As your open AI, continued momentum. Uh, and a lot more innovation and excitement. So we are, we are excited about the country, as always. And like, how is the $3 billion investment shaping up uh, as announced uh, uh, earlier? And like, can you like break down like uh, how much is going where? And like, uh, like uh, and what about that, uh, I think 10 million to ending by 2030? Yes. And how, how's that? So we, have, we announced two commitments uh, when Satya was here. Um, first was a $3 billion investment over two years in both uh, cloud and AI infrastructure yeah. for India. 
uh, and that's on track and we're investing uh, as we had planned. Uh, and then second was skilling. And we had said we will train 10 million Indians on AI by 2030. Mm -hmm. The good news is we've already trained 2.4 million Indians, as I said. And what I'm energized about is 65% of those 2.4 million are women. 74% mm -hmm. of them come from small tier two, tier three towns, right? Mm -hmm. So um, again, I think that's something that we're energized about. And we want to go from 2.4 million to 10 million over the next five years, hopefully faster. But we continue to invest, we continue to scale, continue to train people in India. Yeah, when uh, I wanted to know more about training, like when do when we say we are training people, like is it about uh, just AI literacy, how to use AI tools, or is more than that? It's multiple levels of training, right? It starts with AI fluency, basic understanding of AI. What can this technology do for you? Mm -hmm. Then there are deeper modules on how to build agents, mm -hmm. how to get AI to work for you. Mm -hmm. There are deeper modules for enterprises because mm -hmm. their context and training requirements are very mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a partnership with Upgrad uh, mm -hmm. on upskilling, and we're working with Ronnie and the team there. We have a partnership with Railtel. Uh, we're working with educational institutions. We're mm -hmm. working with the government of India, mm -hmm. the education department on a Shiksha co-pilot, yeah. which I'm excited about. Uh, it used to take teachers 60 to 90 minutes to plan curriculum. What are they going to teach kids? Yeah. Now they're doing it in 60 to 90 yeah. seconds. So imagine giving 60 to 90 minutes back to students to learn. Yeah. Right? So I think there's a ton going on there. Yeah. So like you know, everyone knows like how AI tools are our partner in everything, like thought partner you mentioned, and they're partner in everything. But uh, there are several reports which says that uh, uh, big tech companies are bringing back in-person in interviews because uh, uh, the students are using it to cheat during interviews. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, like, is Microsoft also planning to do the same? Like, uh, AI, like are we moving in towards in-person interviews or AI-assisted interviews for hiring? We do a combination of both, right? And I think going back to AI augmenting, not replacing, yeah. AI helping you in the process with the human in the loop always is something that we genuinely believe in. So mm -hmm. I think our recruitment processes, our hiring processes, our HR processes are using AI where required to mm -hmm. complement and augment capa capabilities, uh, but always keeping human in the loop. Uh, yeah, like then the one who is applying for interview, can they use AI or they cannot use AI? Uh, in terms of like doing hiring, the, like if I am applying for Microsoft, can I uh, use AI during the hiring process, during interviews, maybe? Why technique? not? Because I think going back to AI fluency, right? You need yeah. a workforce that is fluent in AI, that knows how to work with the tools, build these new agents. Mm -hmm. So in fact, every time I'm looking at hiring and interviewing people, I, I go really deep into the AI skills that they mm -hmm. bring to the table, right? Because that's what you need. Uh, so absolutely, I think that's a skill for the future. So like uh, not fully in-person interviews as of now? I think it's a combination. We're using AI as part of all our processes, including hiring. Okay. Uh, and always with the human in the loop. Okay. So like uh, with AI also being our digital teammates, uh, and I uh, read uh, that Microsoft is also uh, uh, implementing return to policy where, where employees have to come three days as office. So I wanted to understand like what do you, like uh, with AI, uh, already there, why do employees need to come back to office? Like, what's the mindset behind return to office policy? Listen, I'm, I'm not very current on, uh, and I think we can do a deeper oh. discussion on the policy if you want, but I think going back to just, I think driving innovation and this mm -hmm. human agent interface now where mm -hmm. humans and agents operate together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where real innovation will happen, right? So I think mm -hmm. that's what we focused on, and that's what mm -hmm. we're working on. So, and uh, I wanted to understand like, be, be, uh, be, besides cloud, we also have like local LLMs on co-pilot devices. So like, what are the use cases uh, of AI on device which you are currently very excited about? So by the way, going back to your earlier question around where is India innovating on the application yep. layer, or the infrastructure layer, or the LLMs, companies like Sarvam, which is also mm. a deep partner of ours, are doing a really lots of interesting work around fine tuning these models for the Indian context, Indian languages, mm -hmm. reducing the pricing as you, as you spoke about. And they're working with several institutions on really bringing these models in the Indian context, and we are partnering with them. Uh, and then I think just from a pricing perspective as mm -hmm. well, right? Partnering with people like Servum and others to really make sure that the context of India is not lost, and we bring the right service at the right price point mm -hmm. for the customers is what we focused on. Okay. Okay. So I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It was uh, really nice. Such to a have. pleasure, yeah. Scott. Lovely meeting you. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you for the time today. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Super.